Good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We've been reading in the book of Deuteronomy. Now, last time we read chapter 10. Now, chapter 10 was about the Ten Commandments or the tablets that had the Ten Commandments being rewritten. Okay. It's about all the uproar, you know, about all of that because Moses came down the mountain and there they were worshiping that golden calf. You know, all that problem. Now, this time, we're ready to read Deuteronomy chapter 11. And I'm just going to sum it up before we get into it and say that this is about the option that we always have before us. And this was the option that God gave the children of Israelite. And he tells them, I'm setting before you blessing or curse. And you can choose which one you want, but choose a blessing because it's better for you, okay? Now there, I've just summed up the whole thing, but we're still going to read the whole thing. I just wanted to mention that. One thing to be aware of, if this seems like we're having some some deja vu, Deuteronomy is, it is a repeat or maybe a summation of events so far since the Exodus. It is the Fifth book of the, let's see, do we call this, I think we call this the Pentateuch, and it is the first five books of the Bible. It is the fifth book of the Torah, right? So, the books of the law, and this is this is the last of Moses' books, is my understanding. Now, that's my understanding, okay? Anyway, we're going to start here, Deuteronomy 11. So, if you feel like we're repeating some things... That's because we are. We're kind of summarizing and going back over things that have occurred and going back over the law. The Lord is reminding them of the law before they go into Canaan to possess the land. So the idea is to reinforce the law before they go in to possess the land. So this is Deuteronomy chapter 11. I'm sorry for that long intro. Uh, We're just going to read this chapter and we'll talk about it as we go through, okay? This is Deuteronomy chapter 11. I am reading in the Amplified Bible. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God and always keep his charge, his statutes, his precepts, and his commandments. It is your obligation to him. Know this day that I am not speaking to your children who have not known by personal experience, and who have not seen firsthand the instruction and discipline of the Lord your God, His greatness, His mighty hand and His outstretched arm, and His signs and His works which He did in the midst of Egypt, to Pharaoh the king of Egypt, and to all his land, and what He did to the army of Egypt, to its horses and its chariots when he made the water of the Red Sea, engulfed them as they pursued you, and how the Lord completely destroyed them, and what he did to you in the wilderness until you came to this place, and what he did to Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, when the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them, their households, their tents, and every living thing that followed them in the midst of all Israel. For your eyes have seen all the great work of the Lord which he did. So the Lord is reminding them of all the things they've seen him do. And he's letting them know that he's not speaking to their children who do not have this first-hand knowledge and experience. So he's really impressing upon them that they have seen what he can do and what he does. Therefore, you shall keep all the commandments which I am commanding you today, so that you may be strong and go in and take possession of the land which you are crossing over the Jordan to possess, so that you may live long on the land which the Lord swore, solemnly promised to your fathers, to give to them and to their descendants a land of great abundance, flowing with milk and honey. 
For the land which you are entering to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you sowed your seed and watered it with your foot like a garden of vegetables. But the land into which you are about to cross to possess, a land of hills and valleys, drinks water from the rain of heaven, a land for which the Lord your God cares. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So God is telling them how wonderful this land is that he's giving them and how it will be, basically, it will be a blessing to them, a wonderful place for them to live. It shall come about, if you listen obediently and pay attention to my commandments, which I command you today, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, your choices, your thoughts, your whole being, that he will give the rain for your land in its season, the early fall rain and the late spring rain, so that you may gather in your grain and your new wine and your olive oil. And he will give grass in your fields for your cattle, and you will eat and be satisfied. Beware that your hearts are not deceived and that you do not turn away from the Lord and serve other gods and worship them, or else the Lord's anger will be kindled and burn against you, and he will shut up the heavens so that there will be no rain, and the land will not yield its fruit, and you will perish quickly from the good land which the Lord is giving you. So notice here, God is telling them they need to listen obediently, pay attention, you know, and then the good land that he's given them, it will receive all these blessings. It will have the rain at the right times. He will have all this good stuff, you know, the grass will grow in the fields. In other words, for your cattle, the grain, you will eat and be satisfied. He's promising them all these things. But he's also warning them, do not be deceived and do not serve other gods. Do not serve idols, you know. So he's he's still telling them of this blessing that they have in front of them. But he's warning them of what can happen if they they turn away. He says, he will shut up the heavens that there will be no rain. And as we know, if there's no rain, that's devastating for your crops. Therefore, you shall impress these words of mine on your heart and on your soul, and tie them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as bands, frontals, frontlets on your forehead. You shall teach them diligently to your children, impressing God's precepts on their minds, and penetrating their hearts with his truths, speaking of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk along the road, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them, as long as the heavens are above the earth. For if you are careful to keep all his commandments, which I am commanding you to do, to love the Lord your God, to walk, that is to live each and every day, in all his ways, and to hold tightly to him, then the Lord will drive out all these nations from before you, and you shall dispossess nations greater and mightier than you. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall become yours. Your territory shall be from the wilderness to Lebanon and from the river, the river Euphrates, as far as the western sea, the Mediterranean. No man will be able to stand before you. The Lord your God will lay the fear and the dread of you on all the land on which you set foot just as he has spoken to you. Now I want us to look for just a moment about the Lord saying you shall impress these words of mine on your heart and on your soul. And he's telling them, 
much like what we think of today, I think we say this in a different way. We say, you know, we want to keep the Word of God in front of us. We want to be thinking on, reading, studying on the Word of God. We want to be thinking about this. We want to remind ourselves of what the Word of God says. You know, we want to impress what God is telling us on our hearts. We want to keep that in our minds. We want to always have that right there. We want to be diligent and to be ready at any time to talk about the Lord. And you know how you do that is just like what he's talking about here. You know, you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Well, what we tend to do is we tend to decorate our house with these little plaques that has, you know, certain verses or sayings, just reminding us of how good God is and reminding us of who we are in God, reminding us of of very good things that help us and reminding us that God loves us, reminding us that we're blessed for following Him. These are good things, right? Also, you'll notice he talks about um, we should be talking about uh, the Bible. We should be discussing the Bible, talking about uh, the Scriptures. It says um, when you sit in your house or when you walk along the road or when you lie down and when you rise up, we should be discussing those things. Well, now, who would we be discussing those things with? Well, a lot of my time I'm spending with my wife, so a lot of times I'm talking to her. There's other people, too, your friends, your other family, my mom, you know, different people you may talk to about Scripture and about God and just have these discussions, you know, having it with friends and uh, your congregation, people in your congregation who should be, you know, that's your church family. They hopefully are your friends. Um, We should be uh, one. I think there's a verse that says we should be like uh, iron on iron. We should be like sharpening each other. And that just means we should be discussing these things. We may even have differences where we disagree, but we should talk about those things, keep kind of an open heart and mind towards what each other are saying. And and we may not always agree, but that's okay. We need to think on these things. And it gives us sometimes someone else will say something that makes you have to think about those verses a little more and maybe study a little more. And that's a good thing. Sometimes for me, It takes a few moments for an idea to kind of, or maybe even more than a few moments, but it takes a little time for an idea to percolate and kind of come up and then be a coherent thought. Because at first, maybe I just have a notion of something, and, and then eventually I have something that I can actually say or write or talk about that will make some sense. So sometimes that takes time, and that's another reason to keep, you know, the Word of God on your mind. And that means, you know, reading, listening to it, uh, whatever works for you, but just trying to keep yourself every day aware of God's Word and spend a little time in God's Word every day. It will make a huge difference. And that is what he's trying to tell them here. He's saying, impress this on your heart and your soul. Tie them as a sign on your hand. Now, can you imagine that? You have them tied as a sign on your hand. No matter what you're doing, you're going to see them, right? No matter what you're doing with your hand, whatever you've tied on there is going to flop around in your face and and be always there, right? So you're going to see that and know that. And then they talk about they should be as bands, and they say frontals, frontlets on your forehead. And I think the Jewish people, they uh, or at least the rabbis or some of them, had this thing where they tied this thing on their head and they had like a little thing, a little frontlet thing. And I don't know if they put scriptures in a little box or what they did exactly, but there was some interpretation of this, of having it on your forehead. Now, for me, when I read this, I think that he kind of means as having his word always in front of you, right? So that you would always, like if I walked around with a little thing tied to my head, then this sign, whatever that sign would be, would always be in front of me. Like maybe it would say, um, well, maybe it would say God loves you, or maybe it would say, remember the Lord, do not forget, you know, the words of the Lord. Something along those lines, you get the idea. But that would always be in front of you, right? You would always see that. 
So that's the idea the Lord is trying to impress upon them that they always keep His Word in their minds and in their hearts. And that's what we should be doing. And these are just ideas, something to get your attention. It's not something you literally need to do. Even they didn't need to literally do that. But it was an idea to get you to pay attention and to think about that and make sure that you're spending some time every day looking at the Word of God. Or in our case, nowadays, of course, we can listen in a number of different ways every day. So, all right. That was probably longer than I meant to be on that. Let's move on. We've just got a few verses left in this chapter, really. Behold, today I am setting before you a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you listen to and obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I am commanding you today. And the curse, if you do not listen to and obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I am commanding you today by following, acknowledging, worshiping other gods which you have not known. Now notice here, there's a couple of small things to notice I just want to point out. The curse is if you do not listen to and obey the commandments. So you can't just listen to the commandments and not obey them, okay? We, we have to really follow through. And that is the hard part. And I, and I would admit, when you're a new Christian, when you first start, a lot is listening and learning. And that is a lot of it. That's a lot of being a new Christian, listening and learning. And maybe you just start making some changes in your life. You're just trying to learn to follow the Lord. And so you're just making some small Fundamental changes, getting started, that's okay. You're, you're new, a new Christian, just following the Lord, perfectly fine. It takes time. All this takes time. But here they've been with God and seen miracles firsthand and know that He is God. They know what He can do. So He's telling them, look, the blessing is if you listen to and obey. The curse is if you do not listen to and obey. Now, both cases, listen and obey. So we have to do both. There has to be follow-through. And for a new Christian, that follow-through may be, may be very small at first, and that's okay. You're just getting started. Perfectly fine. So anyway, I want us to notice that because I thought that, I think that's important. It's, it's a matter of listening. First, we have to listen You can't obey commands you don't hear or don't know about, so you have to listen and then obey. That's an important thing. And the second thing is, this is a choice. You can certainly choose between blessing or curse. Now, when I think of that, that's a pretty simple choice. I can choose, and I'm just going to, I'm going to use food because I like food. I can choose to have this good food that I like. Maybe it's fried chicken, maybe it's pizza, maybe it's whatever I like, and I'm just naming stuff I like. You know, you you do whatever you like. Maybe, whatever, you know. Then, over here, I could choose maybe um, sawdust and dirt and rocks. I know which I'm going to choose to eat, okay? That's plain and simple. I can choose nice fresh water, or I can choose sewage and mud, and and I mean, I know which I'm going to choose. That's the kind of choice that God is giving. It's really a very simple, plain, and obvious choice, and we should easily be able to make that decision. It's like the choice, you know, I'm giving you weird, maybe, maybe funny choices in a way. That's okay. But the idea is, you know, do you... Do you want to have a good life? And by good, I don't necessarily mean easy. Or do you just want to have a bad life? And by bad, I don't necessarily mean it's necessarily hard, though it may be very hard. Either could be hard. Matter of fact, having a good life in Christ is challenging. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world. 
having a bad life may be easy, but you'll never really be happy. You'll never really be satisfied. So that's the choices. To me, it's obvious. I want to, I want to choose to be on the good side of things, to follow the Lord. Even though it's challenging, I want to have that satisfaction of doing the right moral things. That's very important to me. And it should be important to all of us. But that's your choices. And that's the way God puts it out there. You can choose the good or the bad. And that's your choice. And that's what he's telling them too. So let's go ahead and see if we can finish this chapter. It shall come about when the Lord your God brings you into the land which you are entering to possess, that you shall place the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebel. Are they not across the Jordan, west of the road toward the sunset, in the land of the Canaanites who live in the Arabah, opposite Gilgal, beside the oaks of Morah? For you are about to cross the Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you. And you shall possess it and live in it. And you shall be careful to do all the statutes and the judgments which I am setting before you today. So this has been Deuteronomy chapter 11. I want to thank you for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. May God bless you and keep you safe. And remember, God loves you.